Oh, hey folks, it's uh, coming up on about uh, 6.30 in the morning and uh, we've got beautiful conditions here. It's making it much, much easier to walk and I'm gonna take full advantage of that. I wanted to come out and say how surprised I was. Uh, this morning I woke up and I went out at you know, like about 5.20 in the morning and uh, I saw a comment on my channel and I, I did a, a peppery video that uh, uh, was very foul, and I don't mean like by ducks. It was not nice, but in my opinion, it's necessary, it's time. Uh, somebody has to come out here and say stuff uh, that's true, although distasteful. And um, I, you know, when I, usually when I see a, uh, you know, a comment, you know, it's usually somebody that just you know they're on their high horse and you know uh, the illegal immigration gives us this and they're building skyscrapers and they're doing this and they're cutting yards you know and I'm waiting uh, for them to come out and show us what will happen if the illegal aliens go home to all these yards what will happen they'll all be 10 feet high and I mean, it's, like, it's like fucking ridiculous and uh, so I'm waiting to read this comment and uh, this good chap, I believe, uh, looks like he's handy too. I took a look at his videos, and it looks like he can, he can work on cars pretty well. And uh, he said to me, um, not a word you, because I thought he was going to say, I thought the sentence was going to say, not one of your sentences made any sense, because that's usually what I get, right? But this gentleman said, not one not one sentence is going to be in vain that you just said and you know what folks every once in a while the human spirit needs that so i thank you you know who you are and that was pretty pretty good <laughs> you got a rabbit right there <laughs> i told you you have these funny things you see in the morning. I saw a crane sitting in the middle of the street. You're a big rabbit. Yeah, you're a big one. Yeah, you see all these sort of different things when you get out in the morning and you walk, especially before it gets light. Ah, jeez. So, what am I going to tell you? I tuned into William Mount this morning. And uh, William Mount is uh, saying essentially... What I said last night, although I encapsulated it vulgarly, uh, if that's a word. And uh, William Mount uh, came out and uh, basically said um, the same thing. He calls them demoncrats, uh, whereas I just call them people that dirty our fecal matter. And there are plenty of them out there. Uh... Folks, uh, William Mount, um, I just call him Bill. And you know, it's been a while, it's been a couple of years, but I have a video that I showed you where uh, Bill almost died in the hospital. Uh, he had an infection on his head because I think probably because he's got a lot of cats in the house. And, uh, you know, I told you that story where, I, you know, I met a woman who was a when I was younger, like when I was like 25, 26 years old, 23 years old, whatever it was. And you know, the cat people, you know what I mean? And they just like, you know, they're all over the counter and here and there and all that. So he got some kind of really serious infection on his head and uh, they had to uh, operate or do something. And they, uh, they starved him to death. I mean, I know they did the same thing to my landlady when she died and I've, I felt really terrible about it. I felt really terrible. Believe me when I tell you. And uh, he came out this morning. I, they probably tried to kill him. Uh, I have that video. If you go back, put William Mount for the search and you'll see it. It's probably a couple years ago, maybe two. Well, my, my channel, this one has survived, but uh, it's been a revolving door of channels on this uh, for my uh, thing. And uh, if, if you look at William Mount in the description of any of my videos, 
you'll see where they were just starving him down to a, a rail and that was back when they were trying to keep scam going so the only thing you could do is if you wanted to get into the hospital you had to make sure you were up on your these right here and uh, they did that to me too uh, before I was in the know they tried but they didn't I was really glad I didn't get it and uh, for those of you who don't really know uh, in the Philippines it was very very heavy-handed very heavy-handed uh, my wife did not want to take it and it had nothing to do with what I told her uh, she didn't want to take it on her own uh, they were country people uh, and uh, they didn't want it her mother didn't want it and my son didn't want it and uh, they were about uh, maybe um, a thousandth of of one percent of the population over there virtually every one of them got it because they were uh, forced literally forced to get it and um, you know I send my wife money every 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 week <clears throat> and um, uh, she could not go into the malls she could not go to the fruit stands if they did and they got caught they would be giving you an open invitation to get into their car and it wouldn't be an invite it would be mandatory according to my wife and they would take you load you in and go make sure you had all of your these and if you didn't want to get it then they would give you something that was made for animals I've got that on my videos uh, a while ago too I, I whatever that I don't want to get into it but uh, Duterte was a thug he did clean up the, you know, the streets of uh, the Philippines, but he was a thug. And uh, he required everybody to get this. And if they didn't get it, he threatened them with jail. And he threatened them with uh, medicines, let me put it to you that way, that were designed for animals, so he said. Pigs in particular. So you wonder why I come out. And I talk about this stuff, and you wonder why I do it. Well, I've got plenty of experience with it. And my family, thank God, didn't get that in the Philippines. And they had a really hard time. They could not eat uh, for about a couple of days. Uh, it was more than a couple of days. It was about a couple of months. They could not go out and go get food. Uh, but they, they had um, family members that that got it and most of the families got it uh, of my wife most of my wife's family got it we wouldn't take it and uh, they went out and they did the shopping for her and then she had to be extremely careful how to get home because um, uh, the police the um, you see it's different in the Philippines you have thugs so you'll have like a, a you'll have a, a kind of uh, what they call a barrio chief and um, they will look and they will do the best they can to make sure that everybody is uh, blanked up if you understand what I'm saying and um, if you're not they have places that they take you and give you offers that you can't refuse uh, they were very serious about it and uh, again without watchdog organizations or making people understand uh, that there was nothing there. They just merrily continued on with the ever gaining strength of mass hysteria. And like I told you, from face shield idiots walking their dogs with the 30 mile an hour winds blowing all over them to uh, people losing their loved one from taking this and then coming out after their loved one died and then encouraging you to go get it. Just like bizarre, bizarre behavior that made no sense. That they made sure that made sense to you. And that's one of the reasons why I have to come out here and I have to represent myself as a God. Because if I don't, I'm one of you and I don't want to be one of you. Because that's how stupid and filthy and corrupt and mindless and evil most of you are. My subs excluded, of course. So that's been my experience with scam. 
uh, this whole business now. I, I listened to William Mount this morning. He's basically saying the same thing I am. Um, this is going to be very interesting because they're putting together... It's like a movie, and they're putting together an all-star cast. By the way, according to William Mount... Oh, I got a couple pieces of, of gossip, I can tell you, that I thought was interesting. Uh, number one, uh, uh, Clint Eastwood, who's now like 98 or something, he's old, and he's still making these movies. And he's made his living by um, taking advantage of people's desire for guns. You know how it was with Dirty Harry and all these movies that, you know, glorified gun ownership. And uh, he's a hardcore leftist. I did not know that. I, I never, I, I figured he was kind of neutral or uh, a Republican. He is not. He's a hard, hardcore uh, Democrat, and he wants guns taken away from the general public. And uh, that's shocking to me. So uh, I found that out, and then... Uh, I, uh, I came back from work, uh, and I had about an hour drive, maybe 45-minute drive, and for some reason they were just playing music that I liked, which is really unusual because usually there's like nothing I like at all. It's all garbage, you know. Um, over and over you hear this. Uh, it, it's the worst down here because uh, you get music made for wealthy people who have Jaguars and Mercedes-Benz, and... Uh, they just don't know good music. They just listen to that filth, garbage, you know, all that crap you hear. Every day it's the same thing. And for some reason they were playing music that I liked. And then they played that uh, girl that sings that song. Um, it, it, that, that, that song that goes up real high. I forgot, I forgot her name. Uh, but um, the, the, uh, that, I can't remember the name of that girl. Um, it, it, Jesus, that real popular song. The girl that is real crazy looking, she's white. And I uh, forgot her name, but um, that one that sings that crazy song. Um, uh, I, it, it, the, the lyrics are all about, uh, about God. I still like the song, but I clearly it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, a gay woman singing the song. I forgot, I forgot what, what it is. Good luck. Uh, she, Roan or whatever her name is. Uh, good luck. The song Good Luck. Uh, good luck, babe. Uh, evidently, she's got real uh, uh, problems with her fans. And uh, I was listening to the radio yesterday when that song ended, which I like. I like the song. I, I think it's interesting as hell, uh, the music. I'm certainly not interested in the lyrics, but the, but the, uh, the music itself is, is wonderful to me. And they said that uh, she had a dust-up with, uh, like, quite a few fans that were, you know, like, trying to get her autograph or this and that. And she was very rude to them. And you have to be really uh, doing that a lot for that to really make the rounds. I don't think that's just a one-time event. So they're saying that uh, uh, she may not last too much longer because if she doesn't <clears throat> become grateful to her fans... <clears throat> She's going to get. Uh, uh, she's going to get a lesson in how to make sure that you like your fans. Anyways, uh, I don't know what else to say this morning. I'm just kind of passing the time on my walk. I guess we're coming up on seven o'clock, and then if I can walk for another twenty minutes after seven a.m., I've got two hours of walking in. And like I said, that's that's not the kind of uh, of exercise that's going to make you lose a lot of weight. In fact, you probably won't lose hardly any at all, depending on your diet. But it does help the body. It does kind of level out your, uh, uh, you know, demons in your body there that are trying to take you down. <laughs> you know, strokes and this and that and sugar diabetes. I'm sure it's good for all of it, truly. And uh, I wanted to end it with this. Not last night, uh, but the night before, I had a strange dream, and it woke me up, and <clears throat> it 
see, it's weird. As you get older, and I mean really older, like when you're, when you're like 60 and up, because like when you're like 60 and up, when you think back on the days when you were like 29 or 30 years old, I mean, you're going back more than a quarter of a century. I mean, that's, it's a lot of time. And like your whole perspective changes in life. And let's face it, there's some people that aren't with us anymore, you know, because a certain amount of people uh, kick off in their 60s, even their low 60s, even their 50s. And I had a girlfriend, she was a Jewish woman, and she had two kids, and I met her because at the time I was getting my mojo going, and I had my own place, and I had, a, um, a, you know, a nice little car, and I was just starting to try to get into cutting yards and things like that, and I had a full-time job and a part-time job. I was doing okay. I was getting myself set. I was around 25 years old, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and um, I had bought that waterbed over time. And uh, that's back when waterbeds were fashionable, <clears throat> before they figured out how bad they are for you in every way, including smashing through second floor lofts and things like that. But um, I, I wound up uh, making the payment. I paid it all off. It took me like, like 12 weeks or something. It was like a $400 waterbed. And um, I put an ad up in the paper. I said, look, if you want it, just come and you know, give me 200 bucks or 150 and you can have the bed. And I think I got like $200 for it. And this very attractive woman came over, a Jewish woman. A little mannish, I will admit that. The, the woman is or was. A little mannish, I would say. She was tall, like maybe five foot seven. She was tall, and, um, uh, and long hair, and pretty. And as a matter of fact, she looked like Kirstie Alley. Kirstie Alley has passed away, but she looked very much like Kirstie Alley when that movie Summer School. That's she looked a lot like that. As a matter of fact, I was very noticing of that when I she came over to buy the bed at that place and uh, she had two little boys and uh, I guess she was divorced or something and uh, she bought the bed and long story short uh, it was kind of a two-for-one deal because I wound up sleeping in the bed uh, with her and uh, that went swimmingly and it was really wonderful until my ex-girlfriend who was a young woman uh, decided that she'd had enough of that and uh, now all of a sudden she wanted me back and uh, she uh, found out where uh, that girl's father worked and he worked at a car dealership a major one here uh, in Fort Lauderdale and uh, she quickly put an end to anything that uh, I could get going and uh, boy that led to some really really dangerous things although it was a beautiful time in my life frankly um, you know, the kids, of course, liked me. You know, she had two little boys, and the little boys were like crazy about me. They just loved me. <laughs> and um, they knew I, I you know, I, I tried to do right by them. And, you know, I, it, they weren't my kids, so I couldn't really discipline them, but I still kind of did by, you know, telling them what was right and don't go to the salad bar and pig out and, you know, be, be, be bad kids. Don't do, you know, and they, they kind of liked me. They kind of liked me a lot. And, uh, the, 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 the woman's Jewish mother kind of respected me for that, too. I did videos on this a little bit. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, it, it was a beautiful time in my life. And then it, uh, it went south. And there was just no choice. And she did offer me, uh, like, a chance, uh, you know, to become Jewish and, you know... Uh, become Jewish and I, I, I just didn't you know it's not me it's not something that I could do at least not by you know by honest choice but it was tempting because every three or four days uh, we would get a knock on the door at her house and um, you know Elliot or whatever anybody down from the Jewish Posnick Center there would hand me an envelope and say can you give this to Rochelle and I said of course and then she'd open it up and there's $400 in there. And I mean, back then, in 1988, 89, 88, whatever it was, I think it was 89, 
Uh, it was a lot of money, $400. Buy a lot more than you can now. So it was a lot of money, and this happened all the time. So <clears throat> it didn't work out, <clears throat> but I mean, it worked out for what it did. Some of the best times of my life were, were over there with her on the beach, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, under the moonlight. Uh, and boy, I remember when when she left, <laughs> man. I remember I was cutting yards there, and I was just weeping, <laughs> cutting the yards. I laugh about it now. It wasn't too funny at the time, and just weeping and crying and weeping, cutting these yards and thinking about the times that I was with her, and that wasn't the only time. I had met a girl up in West Palm Beach, uh, up in Lake Worth, and she was a Filipino, and I got uh, well acquainted with her, and uh, she... <laughs> She would come out and meet me from time to time. And um, those were some of the happiest days of my life as well. I mean, even more so be, because uh, that uh, little Filipino girl, uh, uh, she had all the right parts in all the right places, if you know what I mean. It was really, really very enjoyable, I must admit to you. And uh, I know this is TMI and everything, but this is going somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I look back on it now, and like maybe like like 20, 20 years ago, I could look back on it and I could touch it. You know what I mean? In, in other words, like if I went near her place that she was, I'd say, "Oh, I'm right next to her." But like as time goes on and you become like sixty years old, you could get near the place and and like you don't even remember it anymore. You know what I mean? It's because it's just kind of like time moves on. So I had this dream last night. And I, I saw her, and I kissed her. And I, and the, I had another girlfriend who was Chinese that I didn't treat her well. It was messed up. And I, I always dream about her uh, for whatever the reason. And I wasn't good to her, you know. And uh, I, I, I do dream about her often. And it's always unsatisfactory, you know. Sometimes I get back with her, or this and that. And so she was very good to me, uh, which I didn't really reciprocate, frankly. But anyways, I'm dreaming last night, and I'm, I, I like, I was excited. I saw her, and of course, you always see them as they were, right? You don't see them like you know, 30 years later, because that's a long time ago. It's over 30 years ago. And I went to kiss her, and I, as I kissed her, as I got close to her mouth, her face became round, and it looked like that deaf uh, uh, image, the, 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 the like, like a, like a, I, I don't know. You, you know, you have that sickness thing, uh, the Grim Reaper. And then there's something else there. I, I, I forget what it is. I can't explain it. But anyways, when I kissed her, I, I realized I was kissing that thing. And I just immediately said to myself, she died. She must have died. And I'm kind of like with a weird feeling because, I, you know, sometimes people do that. Um, you, you know, you hear about it where somebody dies and, you know, you're across the town or whatever and you, the people just kind of know. And I kind of wonder if that wasn't a sign that, that uh, she passed away. So I kind of didn't mention that yesterday because I forgot. But, I, you know, it was 89, so 90, uh, 2000 is 11 years. Uh... 2010 was 20 years, 2030 was 30 years, plus four. So it's kind of hard to say what happens to people in 35 years. So I have a feeling that uh, she passed away, and I somehow knew it. Anyways, that's it for the thing. I've been able to burn off 25 minutes off on this video. And uh, now I'm going to make one more two-mile loop for about another 30, 35 minutes. And I'm done with my walk for the morning. And thanks partially to you because 
I have to just kind of drone on and on and on. Anyways, take care, and uh, I will see you later. Bring you up to date on the markets. I've got a kind of a free hand today, I think. I'm not working, and I will try to do what I can to uh, get my situation into a little more comfort. Take care, and I will talk to you later. Bye.